Indie Read, and this is my documentary <laughs> about Hayes Farm, which is a mixed farm and every stable. That was the founder of Hayes Farm, a Jew's dad, came here with her, his father, and he bought the farm in 1935. It was about 80 acres, and he gave £3,000 for it at that time, which consisted of a farmhouse, farm buildings, and a cottage. So moved on since then. There's no value, I expect about two million. Uh, I wouldn't, I came from farming background, but I wasn't a farmer's son. But Jill had been farming all her life and worked extremely hard. As you must appreciate, things were more manly, done manly, physically, and really hard work. And Jill's father was one of the best farmers in the district at that time. Was he an easy man to work for? No, he was very strict and very, very uh, what can I say, he was very punctual in his work. His crops had to be in at the right time, not grow potatoes Christmas Day. They had to be put in in April, well, March, April, when they were due to. What did you farm? We farm, no, we farm about 150 acres of land, red soil. Uh, we could grow most crops. Uh, it's, it's South Pheasant Farm, which is a benefit, as one would know for those that are in agriculture. Uh, we milk, or I milk cows, the wife and that milk cows before I came here by hand. And when I was courting, I came up here courting like you do, and uh, I had to sit down and milk with the rest by hand, which was quite an achievement for me. That's, I was an apprentice painter and decorator, may I add. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's moving on from there. We got milk and machine, but then milk bulk tanker came in, and it wasn't an uh, ideal position to have a dairy put in to uh, milk the cows. So we went out of cows, of uh, milking cows, but uh, we had beef cows. My father in law, he had South Devons. A nice, really nice herd of South Devons. I've got a photo here of a pair of twins. So when when you were first on the farm, Jill, did they was it all worked by hand then with the horses and everything? Oh, yeah, it was worked by hand. As I said, oh. it was all manual, and yeah. you worked by hand, Jill. Yeah. Well, Jill, we did a lot of contract work at that time uh, with tractors, but Jill was the last one in the village to. Uh, Drive a pair of horses, harrowing and mango. Yeah, We've a got a photo there somewhere of, of it. So when did you stop using horses to work then? Ooh. 1950s, was it? Well, I expect 50s. Yeah, that's the pair. That's the pair of corridors. So they're big horses. What, do you, what yeah. kind of horses yeah. they were? Yeah. Cub or... Um, like cob or um, like was, what, the new ones? Well, no, they're the, the breed. breed, like cob horses, cob horses. Oh, horses, like what yeah. they used to like, use. Like horses. Shires and yeah. stuff. Or yeah. something like Rory goes Doris out there. Oh, like Doris, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How did you two meet? Oh, that's Rundle. another story. Rundle. Yeah. Because really? I used to run. All oh, right. Yeah. You should show them a snapshot of him, Bob, could you? Wow. I was in the paper. I was all at the minute. I was, I so did you ever it. ride? Were you ever a rider, Jill, as well? No, she didn't do much to horses. No, I didn't do much to horses. So how, well, did, how did you come to go from cows to horses? What's that? Oh, how did that happen? Well, it happened, um, ah. I had two of us, two hips replaced in 1992. I was quite crippled up and uh, things, I wouldn't work like it was in the return one year. So Maureen was away at the time. She came home and diversified. And she kept the horses. And then Jill and I took a step back. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I came with the horses. Not that I appreciate horses, um, but uh, it saved the bacon, I think, you know, at the time. Yeah. I mean, Jill and I would have survived, but it was a business for Maureen. Do you think she preferred the horses to the cattle? I think she did at that time. Yeah, I don't. Well, yeah, I think she did. So, what, what did you buy her horse, first horse then? Yeah, that fly, the white one. There's a white one here somewhere. Uh, I think she's on it with one of the children. So that was the first horse, was it? No, oh, no, she had a little web uh, Dartmoor, but 
Maureen broke that pony in, and he, when she was 18, Jill and I bought her an, an Arab for, which was quite a bit of money. It's a really, really nice one. Yeah, yeah. Really was. Yeah. He used to be proud and stick his tail out, you know. So when did, um, when did the yard first become riding stable? Riding stables, I started uh, the yard itself as a delivery yard about 35 years ago. I was 21 when it started. And then I started riding stables about 13 years ago. So the liveries were going okay, but then when you turn them out in the summer, I weren't earning so much money. So I started at the riding school because of the foot and mouse and other things that were happening with cattle and sheep and things. So to get another income, I started the riding stables and put in planning. Um, what was your first horse? The first horse I owned myself yeah. was a little chestnut called Frisky with a little flaxen mane and tail. <laughs> Which was the best horse you ever owned? Bungie. Um, little bay mare, 15 hands. Um, done a lot with her and bought her with a bad back um, as a seven year old. So that was the best one I had. And you competed her? Um, done a bit of under trialing with her, um, done mostly hunting, a bit of show jumping, but mostly hunting really. Yeah. I've hunted since I was about 11 years old. So yeah, first pony went out hunting. It would be very artful for Jill and I to see this go out the family no. because they've been in the family so long, you know. Yeah. I know I'm a bit sentimental perhaps, but and I come from a long family which I think that makes you like you are, you know. But it's nice to see it pass on, isn't it? Well, it's I right. think so. It's you know, I don't agree with all they do here by any means, but it makes a bit difference of opinion, but... Um, uh, things change and that's it. You got to move on. But it's sometimes, sometimes it's better if it changes and evolves, but stays. Yeah, that's then right. But yeah. well, we like we not like it to go downhill, you know. We've had a good life here. We have worked hard, but we've appreciated what we've got around us, and really appreciated living in such a lovely place as Idford. Um, I'd like to thank. Mo Coombs and Fred Crispin and Jill for letting me film here and giving me this opportunity.